runes shalt you find, and fateful signs that the king of singers colored and the mighty gods have made. Odin the Allfather, who sends his vision out across the nine worlds in pursuit of knowledge from both the living and the dead. Odin, the shaman. Hello, and welcome to Fateful Signs. I'm artist Sam Flegel, and I produce a series of art based around my love of Norse mythology. Today we're going to talk about Odin in his mythical role as shaman, how artists also serve as shamans to their modern communities, and you'll also get tips on the oil painting process that went into the creation of Odin as Shaman, a painting from the Fateful Signs series that you'll get to watch come to life throughout this video. If you like art, if you like Norse mythology, and if you love Odin, you're in the right place. Dig in and let's see what we can learn. Now, the first thing you'll notice probably is that this is sped way up. About one second equals one minute. So it's sped up extremely fast, but that's so that you can see the painting come to life quickly and not have to just slog through it like I did as I was making it just a little bit at a time. There may be points throughout the video where I slow things down a bit, but to start with, I just want you to understand that this is way sped up and that's you know just in order to see it come to life. Now, the other thing you'll probably notice is that it seems to be a finished photograph next to my painting. Well, that's a digital drawing that I did where I took my initial pencil drawing and did a digital sketch using Photoshop to color it in to help plan out my image. When working in oil, having this kind of a plan goes a long way to helping you find success. Then the other thing you're going to see here is that it starts with a white board that has a pencil drawing on it. That's a drawing that I transferred to the board. That's a copy of the drawing, not the original drawing. And I've gone in and I'm blocking it in using a lot of medium, either odorless mineral spirits or I use Linquin mixed with oil. Typically I use linseed oil mixed with liquin. Uh, and that creates a thinner paint that's also fast drying. And I like to block in my colors and reduce the white of the board. And that gives me something to react to as I go to the next phase of the painting. After I have the thin underpainting done and it's been given, given time to dry, usually it dries overnight or in about a day because of the drying medium that I use, I start going in with more opaque colors. This is where I'm taking heavy reference from the digital sketch that I've done to help plan, but mostly it's just about mixing colors, trying to aim for the right color, put it down, react to it, blend it, uh, find another color if it's not working, and to just keep pushing forward. Um, this phase may seem to be incredibly uh, magical or hard to understand if you're not that familiar with oil paint, but honestly, it's just about mixing the right color and putting it on the board and hoping for the best. And when it doesn't work out, you either wipe it out or you just add more color later on. Much of oil painting is about building up layers of paint. And I try to work in a way where you can still see my drawing and this is so that as I work, the drawing holds up the structure of the piece. And that's actually true all the way to the end, that having the good drawing serves as the foundation for the paint throughout, even as I grow more opaque throughout the process. All right, let's talk a little bit about being a shaman or what is meant by the word shaman. It's most commonly used to refer to a wizard or a wise spiritual worker usually in the context of a more nature-based culture. The role of shaman was used to serve the tribe as a bridge between the realm of the dead, the other world, and our world, the realm of the physical. Odin is often discussed in reference to his role as shaman. He is a speaker to the dead. He can travel across the nine worlds, both physically and spiritually. One of his main aspects is his two ravens, who report back what they see as they travel throughout the worlds each day. This harkens to one of the main methods used by shamans. Sometimes this is referred to as shape-shifting, where the shaman takes the spiritual form of an animal to send his consciousness across the barrier between physical and spiritual realms. That way he can gather information from the other side and then bring that information back for the other members of his society. Odin's ravens, Hugin and Munin, whose names mean thought and memory, serve as the animal spirits that allow Odin to see into other worlds. But the animal spirits are not the only way that Odin can do this. 
Odin famously placed his eye, sacrificing it into the well of wisdom so that he could drink from the well and gain wisdom. This is another way of saying that Odin has one eye in the other world. One of his eyes is physical, the other is spiritual. In this painting, Odin's eye is covered by his hood and his twin ravens encircle his neck. This is to suggest that he has many ways of seeing, many ways of seeing into the other world as a shaman. Now back to a bit of technique, you'll see that this is now the second or even third time that I'm going over the face and the ravens. And each time I go in with the darks first, almost like I'm inking the shadow areas to bring those out and then blending them in and then adding in the highlights to add structure. So again, there's the base layer, the underpainting, and then the first layer of more opaque paint, and then this additional layer, again, more opaque, going darker and lighter at each stage of the painting, pushing and pulling. I should also mention that I use reference. You can see over to the left, my drawing is actually sitting next to the final painting, and I use it as reference throughout the process but I've also shot a model wearing a hood, a friend of mine who has a nice beard. I've gathered reference material online of ravens in different positions. Of course, finding an animal in the exact position I want them in isn't possible, but I can find close images and allow my imagination and technique to take me the rest of the way. But all of this is just in service to the final. It's not about slavishly adhering to any sort of a reference. It's about finding the image and creating the final that I want, and reference is just one tool along that path. I find reference is particularly important for faces and hands. And as we're focusing on the hand, I want to talk about the rune that Odin holds. In his hand is a single rune stone. You'll see here a little bit later that this is the Othala rune. Othala, of course, represents the letter O in Old Norse, or the sound O. The rune also means heritage or blood. For me, this means family. Odin is the Allfather, and family is very important to his story. But it's also important to the shaman's path. While the shaman does stand outside the tribe, he is still a member of the tribe. It is his ability to stand outside that allows him to look beyond into the other world and serve as a bridge for his tribe between the dead and the living, between spirit and between flesh. And this is a place where I think artists share this trait, that the path of the artist is similar to that of the shaman. Artists are often a part of their tribes, but they're often considered weird or introverts or kind of on the fringe. And because of this, they find themselves sometimes standing on the edges looking in. This allows them the ability to comment on the tribe through art and understand aspects of the society that other people may take for granted. But it's also important that the artist participates. They're different, they are a part, but they participate. This is very similar to the role of shaman and is why I personally take a great interest in Odin and the role of shaman because I feel it applies to my life personally as an artist. One of the tools of the shaman is incense used to help enter a trance. And I wanted to include this detail in the painting of Odin as shaman by having a brazier filled with burning incense that harkens to this shamanistic practice. But I also wanted to connect it to the Nordic symbols. And in this case, I used the Vegvisir, which was placed on the bowl uh, part of the brazier. The Vegvisir is an Icelandic symbol, often compared to a compass, when it was first explained to me, the idea was passed on that the Vegvisir is a charm or a compass that always helps you find your way home. It becomes the anchor that serves as your place here on this area, on this plane, as you send your spirit over to the other plane. That it's always important to have an anchor in your ability to find your way home. Otherwise, without, the shaman can become lost in the other world. And I see this connection in art as well, that it's important to have people and things in your life that remind you that you're more than just the artist, even though the art is your form of expression. That brings us to the end, where I'll be signing the painting. 
I hope you enjoyed watching it come to life and to learn a little bit about the process of oil painting, but also some lore and some interesting topics about the role of shaman and the way that intersects with the role of artist. Of course, these are just my own thoughts and musings, and the painting may mean something different to you, and that's fine. If you have a different meaning, I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Or if you have a different idea of how shaman works or art works, I would love to learn more. So please share your ideas in the comment section below. Now I'm proud to say that the original oil painting for Odin as Shaman sits in the home of a private collector and is a part of a really amazing, beautiful collection of art. However, at the time of this video, the original drawing for Odin as Shaman is still available on my website and there are still limited edition prints available and you'll find all of that at FatefulSigns.com. All of my social media links are down below if you're interested in following me. Please like and subscribe. Liking this video helps other people seeing it. Subscribing helps grow the channel. Thank you so much, and I hope that you find runes and fateful signs in all the places you're looking and some of the places you're not.